Hey everyone, welcome to Gastromania. Today I'll be showing everyone how to make baku tea, which literally translates to pork bone tea. I normally like to prepare this simple soup from scratch as I prefer altering the broth to my preferences. I love this dish as it requires almost no effort. Just throw everything into the water and come back one hour later after going through an example sheet or two. Simple and the video will be slightly shorter for this dish. Let's get right into this recipe. To make a good bowl of bakute, you will need the right cut of pork ribs. The general cut of pork ribs will be the prime rib, or the longer pork ribs. I will be using about 700 grams of pork ribs for 4 people's portion as we are only having soup with rice for tonight. Based on your preference, you can get those that carry more meat or longer bones. For me, I will be choosing those with smaller bones and more meats. Blanch the meat to get rid of the gamey taste from the ribs. The ribs should not have too much blood remaining in the bones. Wash the ribs after blanching to rinse off the impurities that leave the ribs in the process. Next, let's look at the herbs we'll be adding into the soup. We have to know some basic properties of each herb so that you are able to adjust the taste of the soup to your own preference. The first herb is 30 grams of yuzhu or Solomon seal rhizome. This herb is commonly used in Chinese soups as it provides a faint, sweet taste. It has the ability to help regulate blood glucose in the human body. The next herb is 10 grams of Tangkui or Angelica root. This herb is used to improve blood circulation in the human body. It has a very medicinal, bitter taste that becomes sweet after boiling. Do not add more than 2 slices in the soup for serving 4 people as its flavour is very overpowering and you do not want your soup just to be filled with the medicinal herby taste. Next, we have 3 slices of Chinese licorice root or Kan Chao. It provides a naturally sweet aroma for our soup which is essential for this dish. The longer this is boiled, the more sweet aroma is released into the soup. Next, we have 25 grams of Tang Shen or Pylos Ashabel root. Tangshan tastes really similar but weaker than ginseng in terms of taste and medicinal properties. It has a medicinal bitter taste with a sweet aftertaste. Next, we have 3 star anise. Star anise has a sweet and licorice like fragrance and is often added in meaty dishes in Chinese cuisine, including my braised pork recipe. It's a really good ingredient to balance out the meaty flavors so that you won't feel overly surfeited over time. Next, we have cinnamon bark, another herb commonly used for meaty dishes. It has a sweet, woody flavour and a slight citrusy note and provides a spicy aftertaste. Its flavour is very strong so it's not advisable to add more than 4 for 4 people's portion. Next, we have 15 grams of shu ti huang or cooked Chinese foxglove root. It has a flavour profile of being faintly sweet. It has detoxifying properties and is able to help detoxify the blood. In this soup, it's also responsible for making the colour of the soup dark, so you don't have to add any dark soy sauce at all. Next, we have 20 grams of Chuanxiong or Sichuan Low Rich Rhizome. It has a spicy bitter taste with a subtle sweet aftertaste, adding a special layer of flavour hidden within the soup. In traditional Chinese medicine, it is used for treating gynecological disorders. Let's cut up the bigger ingredients like Tang Shen, Gan Chao and Shu Di Huang so that they can fit inside the cheese cloth more easily and release more of their flavours into the soup. We also have other ingredients that are not herbs but essential for our soup's flavour which I will go through as I'm adding them while cooking since there will not be too much of cooking for our soup. Tighten the cheese cloth and tie it up if your cheese cloth is large like mine. And we're off to the stoves. First, add in about 3 litres of water and bring it up to a boil. Once the water starts boiling, add in whole cloves of garlic. Add them unpeeled and whole so their flavour can slowly release and develop throughout the long simmer. I will be adding 10 cloves but you can add more if you prefer a stronger garlic flavour in the soup. Don't reduce the amount of garlics added. Next, about 15 grams of white peppercorns to add another depth of flavour inside the soup and followed by the bag of herbs prepared earlier as well as the blanched ribs. 
Next, we can add extra side ingredients throughout the boiling process depending on what you're adding. I will be adding about 15 whole dried mushrooms, soaked, and add the soaking liquids into the soup for another layer of flavour. Please remember to remove the stalks. I actually forgot to remove it and took them out later to remove it. With all these ingredients added, we can start lightly seasoning the soup. Add in about 2 tablespoons of soy sauce for some umami flavour, followed by 1 teaspoon of salt. Cover the pot and allow it to boil for at least 1 hour to allow the herbs flavour to develop in the soup. You may season it at the end again with salt if it's not salty enough for you. After about 1 hour, the ribs should not even have a trace of blood at all. The meat should be soft like this where the chopsticks are able to pierce through the meat easily. At this point, you can add the remaining additional ingredients that do not take long to cook such as tofu paus and inoki mushrooms. There are many other ingredients you can add into the soup as long as they are not strongly flavoured like other mushrooms. Cover the pot again for about 10 minutes to let the tofu paus soak up the soup and the inoki mushrooms cook. Lastly, add in the iceberg lettuce right before serving and off the fire. Stir in the lettuce and remove the cheesecloth containing all the herbs. Prepare to serve. Take up the ingredients and pour the soup over them. Serve the soup with fluffy steamed rice, cut chilies in dark soy sauce and Chinese tea if you're feeling traditional. A very nutritious and hearty soup meal for dinner. Time to dig in! We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked my video, please consider subscribing to my channel for 2 recipes a week. Let me know if you have any recipes you would like to see demonstrated in the coming weeks. And with that, I'll catch you later.